Hey y'all, it's Callie and welcome back to another bi-weekly reading vlog. This one is special because I am out of, I'm going to leave for France tomorrow. And so I won't have the chance to upload this week's vlog on time, so I'm extending it, uploading a different video instead, as you have already seen. Super exciting stuff. So I'm going to start out with what I am currently reading at home right now. I am listening to the audiobook for The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. I am on page 217. I am really intrigued. I don't love it, but it's exciting and interesting enough to find out about these people's lives that I'm going to continue listening to the audiobook. I'm going to have a lot of time in France. It's a school trip, so we are going to be taking a lot of buses. It's a really busy time of year, so our hotels are kind of far away from where we'll be going every day. So I'll have lots and lots of bus rides, so I'm hoping to get a whole bunch of reading done while I'm there, which I'm super excited about, super unexpected. This, there are definitely some problematic things, but it also has some to do with the time period. I am super intrigued to see what else is going to happen, because a surprising amount has already happened, and I don't know how there's, like, so much more. There's four times this. And I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm super intrigued to find out what that will be. I'm enjoying this. The audiobook narrator is really, really good. And yeah, that's where I'm at in this one. Since I finished the ebook for Belly Up yesterday, I have started the ebook for Anne of the Island by Ella Montgomery. This is book three in the Anne of Green Gables series. I am currently on page 18, just a little bit chunk of the way through. I'm just kind of reading a little bit here and there. I'm also going between this one and Fiancé for the Night, I believe. It's a free ebook I got through iBooks. I just wanted a little bit of romance to kind of motivate me to also read this, because if I read a chapter of this, I'm allowing myself to read a chapter of Fiancé for the Night. So I'm using it as motivation. This is... This one is a lot more interesting than the past ones, because Anne is actually the age I am currently, so I the things she's doing are making a little bit more sense, and it's not really as much of a childish messing around. I'm really enjoying it so far. This might be a 5 out of 5, which is really rare for me, and a classic, or what I determined to be a classic. And then in Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas, I am currently on page 133. I am really, really enjoying the story, and I am thinking that I'm going to take this one on the trip with me, as well as another book, but I'm going to use my other book as a chance to do the try chapter tag, so I'm super excited about that. Yeah. This is where I'm at with my reading. I am just loving the characters and how everybody's starting to come together a little bit. I can imagine that it is kind of building up so that we have all of the characters together for the last, for Kingdom of Ash, because Tower of Dawn follows Kale. So I'm just so excited. I'm loving it. And that's where I'm at. Hey y'all, it's Tuesday morning and I wanted to update you guys on my reading before I head to the airport. So I already have Empire Storms packed as well as the fixes and those will be the two physical books I take with me. But just to update you guys in The Pillars of the Earth, if I can follow it, I am on page 383, a good third of the way through the book. I'm, it's just interesting. I don't know why because I can't like, couldn't tell you exactly why, but I'm just loving seeing all of our characters and all of the different things they go through. Might not be anything crazy exciting, but it's just so interesting. And I can't put my finger on why. But it is really cool, just really intricate and fascinating. Like, I would never be able to write anything like this. So it's just amazing. I definitely don't agree with a lot of the things that are going on but they're going on, so there's nothing I can do about it right now. I'm going to be listening to a lot more of this. I think there's still like 25 hours left on the audiobook. So I have plenty of audiobook listening I can be doing. And then in Anne of the Island, I am on page 30, a little chunk of the way through. I've been focusing more on Fiancé for the Night, not gonna lie. I think I'm 75, 80 pages through that one. I think it's like 214 total. This is one of the ebooks I'm focusing on. Not gonna lie, I'll probably read Fiance for the Night and then this one, 
because I think I have 17, 18 days left to read this one before the loan goes through with my library. But yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna head out in an hour or two and I don't know what my updates will be, how they will be. I'm gonna assume because I'll be on the school trip and have other people in my room that the earliest I will update will be like a week from now. So if that is the case, I will try to insert some clips of driving and other things like that just so this clip isn't like four clips from two weeks. But anyways, I will see you guys when I see you in the next clip. Not in the US. It is Wednesday afternoon, I think. This whole time thing is really weird to me. So I haven't really listened to much audiobook because it wasn't working even though it was downloaded to my phone, which was really weird. I didn't really appreciate that a lot. But anyways, and then I didn't really get to read Anne of the Island, but I did finish Fiance for the Night and then I started the next book in the series, um, Wedding Lullaby, I believe. And then in Empire of Storms, I haven't read a lot, but I have read a little. I am now on page 154, just a little chunk of the way through. I'm gonna try to focus on this one. This is what I'll be taking with me, but ebooks are probably gonna be what ends up happening the most, but I'm kind of surprised I got to update you guys today. We'll see if I'm able to update you guys in the future.
y'all. It is now Saturday afternoon. It feels like about five o'clock, so I am really kind of weird because we are back home, obviously, by my bookshelves, and I wanted to update you guys on the whole bunch of reading that I got done while I was out of town. I got to update you guys once in my whole 10 day trip. Probably could have updated a little bit more, but I made lots of little clips for you guys of some things that we did and some traveling, but a lot was just go, go, go. So I didn't really have any time and the little bit of time I did have was usually with a bunch of other people around me. So, or my little bit of time to sleep. So I didn't really have an opportunity to update you guys, but I'm gonna do that right now. I have finished three out of the four books in the One Night to Forever series by Mel Mel Melissa McClone. I've had so much fun. They're just light fluffy ebook reads that I bought with an iBooks gift card. It was Fiance for the Night and The Wedding Lullaby and a little bit engaged. Those were the three I finished. I'm over halfway through Love on the Slopes and I'm just really, really enjoying them. I'm gonna give them all a solid four stars. As the series progressed, the way it tied in with the other characters because it's companion series talking about characters that you meet in the other books, it was obvious who it was gonna be. And like in this last book, it feels forced, the relationships a little bit, but you know what? It's still really cute and really good. You could read them on their own. They just really mention the characters on the sly, but I'm just having such a wonderful time. They're such fun, easy reads. And then in addition to those three ebooks, I finished three audiobooks on the trip and those were the six books I finished on the trip. I was really surprised I was able to get so much reading done. I barely read anything physically. I had the opportunity to, but I had a whole lot of ebooks and audiobooks coming through the library and I was overwhelmed and I missed out on a few. I waited at least 12 weeks for Escaping from Houdini and because of the time difference, I lost it. The stupid airplane ride. Anyways, let's continue. The first one I finished was The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. I listened to a majority of this early in the week during the school trip. We had lots and lots of long bus rides because we were on big charter buses, tour buses, whatever you want to call them. And so I had many an opportunity to listen to audiobook there. So that is where I finished most of this one. It was really good. I wouldn't continue, I will not be continuing on with the series, but it was really interesting to see all of these things. And especially when we were there and it was talking about building churches in the early 1100s and then seeing churches that were built in the early 1100s. And that was just really, really crazy. And it kind of connected me more to the story, kind of seeing how some of these people lived and even just mentioning the area of the country we were in during the time and being there now. It was really, really cool almost a thousand years ago. Really wild and had a really great time. It was really long and I'm really glad I listened to the audiobook because it was just phenomenal and so worth it. Then I finished the audiobook for A Tree Grows in Bo Brooklyn by Betty Smith. I really, really enjoyed this one. It's just a coming of age story about a girl in the early 1900s in Brooklyn, about a hundred years ago. It was just really cool seeing the just progression of her life and the hardships that she went through and then kind of how her life resolved a little bit and just seeing her grow up. It was a big, kind of just adventure following her, just in her everyday life. It was really fun and I'm really glad I listened to it because a lot of these books are pretty interesting in audiobook format, but I don't think I would have gotten through them if I had physically read them. I'm gonna give this one a solid four out of five stars because for a classic, I really enjoyed it. So I really enjoyed it. And then the next audiobook I finished was What to Say Next by Julie Buxbaum. I finished the entirety on this of this book on the airplane ride home. It was like a nine and a half hour flight. It was so long. So I, and it was during the day, so 
I was able to finish all of this and I really really loved it. I'm giving it five out of five stars. It follows our main character whose father is killed in a car accident about a month before we start the book and then she has been kind of struggling with her social life and school now that she doesn't have her dad anymore and she was really close to her dad and so it's kind of her struggling with this while also getting to know and becoming friends with this weird boy at school and it is just such a sweet wholesome relationship I absolutely loved our main character David. He was such a sweetheart and he is considered to be on the autism spectrum and even though he's highly functioning and it was just so sweet and so adorable. I absolutely loved it so much. It was I would want to reread this one at some point because it was just so much fun and so wholesome. So wholesome. They just wanted to talk and be friends and that was it. And they did end up progressing into a relationship but it started out just simply needing someone to be there that you knew you could rely on to not talk when you didn't want them to talk or to distract you and such. So sweet. I absolutely loved it. Highly suggest. I just finished my contemporary recommendations but I would highly suggest this one and it does even have some characters of color. I believe our main character, our female main character Cat Kit. I believe our female main character Kit is half white and half Indian or Asian of some sort. David kind of mentions it more detailed because he likes details but it was just so much fun kind of seeing that play a little bit of it into it but it was just so wonderful. And then while we were on the trip the audiobooks just kept piling up and you have three days. The way my library works is you can have up to five things checked out to you at a time and then you can have and then if something comes, if a hold comes through, you have three days to take an action, whether that be return the book, check it out, whatever, but you can only have five things checked out. And so one of the things I had checked out was Anne of the Island, the ebook version, and I ended up returning that so I could get some audiobooks that I had been waiting a little bit longer for, and this tends to be a little bit more available than some of the audiobooks. So I put a hold on this when I was on page 52. I'm still really enjoying it, but I just haven't gotten the chance to pick it back up yet. And then the current audiobook I've been listening to is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier and I'm on page 221. I am intrigued. It's a little creepy, a little weird, but I'm intrigued. I've heard other people talk about it. I was suggested to read it. It's another one of those classics. I am just a classic reading machine this month and so I am a good bit over half of the way through, I'm trying to get through it pretty quickly. I have a lot of things on hold yet again, but I'm really enjoying this. It's pretty good. I'm probably going to give it another four stars because like A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, I'm pretty much enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot more than some of the other classics I've read. And then in Empire of Storms, which I didn't read a lot of, I am on page 219. I'm going to try my hardest to read so so much of this in the coming bit but I also have a lot of booktube to watch. I have like 170 videos. I'm so behind but that's okay. It'll all work out fine. I have about a week of summer and before we go back on vacation a week of summer schedule. So I'm planning to get a lot of stuff done whether that be booktube or just kind of reorganizing my life because I'm a little overwhelmed but it'll all work out fine and yeah I will see you guys in the next clip when I update you more about my reading. Hey y'all it is Sunday afternoon you may notice that I have rearranged my bookshelves once again I've been really stressed out and confused and there's been a lot going on very hectic and it's just been a lot so I went to go get my nails done and there just happened to be a Barnes and Noble like a two minute walk away so I bought four books. I 
feel sorry, but at the same time, don't feel sorry. I completed two series on my shelf, and then I worked and progressed and bought two more that are part of series that I already own. I didn't buy any new series. I almost did, but then I didn't. So, I don't know. It's a big dilemma. I'm trying to not buy as many books. Not really working very well. But that's okay. I am going to go ahead and wrap this week's vlog up right now and kind of tell you guys about some of the reading I've done because I'm planning to start a 24-hour readathon for myself starting whenever I can at some point this evening. We are having a family dinner which means that the couple that lived with us for a while they are going to come and bring their dogs and we just have dinner and it's a great time. So I'm gonna start it after that to get as much reading in as possible. I'm still a little jet lagged so I've been go waking up really early which should be really good for this. I'm going to try to finish Empire Storms and then I'll choose another book to read. I have plenty of options but check in to that vlog. I'm gonna do its own separate vlog because there's some weird things going back on vacation but things may be changing. Who knows? I'm gonna do my best to give you guys as many videos as possible so yes, let's jump in to the reading I'm currently doing and then my wrap up for the week. So I've been reading the ebook for Inn of the Island once again. I am now on page 58, but I am once again going to put a pause on this. I had another audiobook come through and since, the, since this is usually available, I'll just move on to an iBook or a book I have on iBooks or an eARC I have. I might read red, white, and royal blue because I have it and I really want to. I'll probably end up doing that. We'll see what happens tonight. I'm enjoying this. I'm just prioritizing audiobooks because this one is readily available and some of the audiobooks are usually a little bit harder to get. So yes, that is where I am on this. In the audiobook for Rebecca, I am on page 263. I haven't read a whole bunch of this because I'm trying to prioritize catching up on booktube. I still have a little over a hundred videos and I've been watching them by length. So I'm to videos that are between, I get weird like this sometimes, so I just choose to do things really randomly. So I have watched all of the videos between zero, like and 10 minutes and now I'm on to videos between 10 and 20 minutes so it's gonna progressively take longer to get through the number of video I don't know it's weird but that's what I'm doing I'm not really prioritizing audiobooks unless there's a situation where I can listen to audiobooks and not watch booktube ie drives or like a shower or just when I'm trying to interact with my family more or when I'm down in more public spaces it's a lot easier to just put my headphones in and have my phone instead of dragging around my laptop which is where I watch my booktube anyways this is really creepy and it's taken a really strange twist and I don't know how I feel about it. It's all about this girl who marries this older man and she moves to where he lives and she finds out about her, his ex-wife and it's, she's really creepy. Everybody at the estate loves the ex-wife and it's just really creepy. Something weird happened don't know what's gonna happen next. I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying the audiobook. I've got about two hours left so I could possibly potentially finish it because when I start my 24-hour readathon I will put a pause on booktube and listen to audiobooks and prioritize that. And then in Empire of Storms my goal each day for the next few days will be to read 100 pages of whatever book I'm currently reading. So yesterday I was able to read over 100 pages. I do 100 pages and then the next chapter like so if the next 100 pages is in the middle of the chapter I'll go until the next chapter break if you understand that. And I'm currently on page 349 almost halfway through I'm really enjoying this. It's getting really crazy. It's so many battle scenes and I just can't fathom what in the world could possibly happen in Kingdom of Ash or even the second half of this book if everything is already so crazy. 
some of our favorite beloved characters have already almost died and like how are, it's just crazy and I don't know what to think and I'm loving it and it's steamy while still being action-packed and it's just so wonderful I'm absolutely loving it so much this is book five in the throne of glass series I'm trying to make my way through it and I'm loving it so much. So far this week I have finished five books and that is probably all I will be able to complete or what I have completed so far in my predictions. I finished... I have read three audiobooks and two ebooks. The two ebooks I finished were A Little Bit Engaged and Love on the Slopes and those are both by Melissa McClone. I really enjoyed them. They were just kind of an average romance story. They all tied together because they were companion novels, but the connections were really forced at times, but overall they were just really heartwarming and really lovely and really more intricate, and I just, I really loved them. And then the three audiobooks I finished, I finished A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. I gave this one four out of five stars. It was really adorable. It was a coming of age story about a girl in the early 1900s in Brooklyn, New York, and it was just such a fabulous time. And then I finished The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. I really enjoyed this one. It was a surprise and joy. I almost DNF'd it about an hour through the audiobook, but I listened to all 40 hours of this and really enjoyed my time. I gave it four stars. It was so intricate and so just crazy, and I absolutely loved it. And then lastly, I finished What to Say Next by Julie Buxbaum, which I gave five out of five stars. I loved this cute little romance story that was super simple and just absolutely lovely between a girl who has lost her father and kind of been struggling with that and her friend group. And you have David who has always struggled socially, but they were just so wholesome and adorable and sweet. And I absolutely loved the story. I hope you guys have enjoyed this special two week vlog. I had a wonderful time in France and I'm sorry I didn't update you guys a whole lot but I tried to get as many little clips of traveling and just doing things as possible. It was just so wonderful and I'm so glad I could bring you guys along at least a little bit and I will see you guys in my next video. If you've liked this video please like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!